Oh, good day, everyone. It's Russ Barkley back after a couple of weeks off. So really appreciate your patience with me on this channel. As you know, I'm not going to be doing any more weekend research reviews as I had been doing for the past two and a half years, but I will occasionally post a video with a commentary on something I consider to be uh, newsworthy or if something appears in the news about ADHD and I have a strong reaction to what is being reported. And that happened this past week with a particular article about exposure to acetaminophen, known as Tylenol here in the U.S., but I believe it's paracetamol, I may not be pronouncing that correctly, over in Europe. Nonetheless, a study, it's actually a review of the literature, was published, and it was picked up by a variety of news sources, including this one at neurosciencenews.com. But it was also discussed over at Psychology Today and a couple of other news sites as well. Now, I discussed this topic back in March when a large study, a meta-analysis, in fact, was published concerning the relationship between women taking this medication during pregnancy and subsequent risk for ADHD. Sometimes these studies also include autism and others, uh, other neurodevelopmental disabilities. But nonetheless, we're gonna focus on the ADHD risk. And as always, when the news sources pick up this research, they discuss it as if there is a slam dunk causal connection between medication use and higher risk of ADHD and offspring of women using this medication. Uh, and as you know, and we've discussed it repeatedly over the last two and a half years, correlations cannot by themselves be used to infer causation, particularly when there are equally compelling arguments against the causal interpretation, reflecting possible other causal pathways in that explanation. So in this case, what the news sources were talking about was a large review that was published over in the journal Environmental Health. And this was a review that used new guidelines for conducting such reviews, known as the Navigation Guide, and in these guidelines, they evaluate the quality of the research and the strength of the relationship found in the original studies. We're not gonna go through that because I don't have much to say about that. I do wanna point out, however, that the authors found 46 studies to review. 27 of them showed a relationship between this medication used in pregnancy and risk for ADHD or other neurodevelopmental disorders. But 13 studies either found no association or found a protective, a negative effect against these disorders. Uh, now, the study or this review goes on to say that the majority of studies did find a relationship between ADHD or excuse me, between Tylenol use and ADHD risk, and they felt that the strength of the relationship was pretty strong, as was the strength of the association. Now, what are we talking about here? Well, other studies that actually report the numbers show that there is about a 30% increase in risk of ADHD in women who use this medication during pregnancy. Okay, and then off to the races go the authors and then the journalists trying to interpret this as if taking the medication is the cause of the ADHD risk, that is the increased risk. And you and I know that you can't necessarily do that. And why is that? Because an equally, if not more compelling explanation for the correlation isn't that the medication is causing the disorder, it's that mothers with a higher risk of ADHD themselves may be more likely to take this medication during pregnancy than other women. Why would that be the case? Well, as I explained in March, adults with ADHD report a variety of medical difficulties, including increased pain, increased illnesses, vague bodily complaints, and they also may have more 
autoimmune disorders, as well as other medical problems. So there are reasons why women with ADHD, when they get pregnant, are more likely to experience illnesses, pain in particular, that might lead them to turn to using this type of medication for pain management. So how do we disentangle these two explanations? Well, the best way to do it is through a genetically informed design, which means that we control for the mother's degree of ADHD, either genetically or through ratings of the phenotype of ADHD that she has. And then we examine for the relationship between the medication and risk of ADHD in the offspring. But the first thing you control for is the elephant in the room, which is the biggest effect leading to ADHD is genetics. And until these studies make efforts to control for the genetic risk, we can't really infer what the medication is doing. That's what I said in March. That's what I'm saying again here. And it's interesting that journalists who report on this usually have no science background and therefore don't understand what the confounding variables are. Moreover, the people who are doing these studies are doing studies on already acquired databases and they want to analyze them and they want to get publications and they want to come up with significant results. But what they don't realize or what they realize and don't care about is that many of these databases don't record whether the mother has the same disorder or not, much less whether the father has the same disorder. That needs to be controlled out of these relationships as well. But nonetheless, at least controlling for the mother's disorder and genetics would be the number one confounding factor you have to control for. But if it's not in the database, oh well, we'll just go ahead and run the correlations and control for other demographic and other features in the database and then we'll report the results. And then we'll go ahead and interpret them as if they imply a causal connection, which is what these authors want to do. Now they do admit that there were several studies that did attempt to control for genetics, but in a way using siblings. So they looked at exposure to the medication in siblings, yes or no, and in the kids, who they were studying in the paper, yes or no, known as a full sibling comparison. And guess what? When the full sibling comparison is done, there's no relationship. Now, the authors of this review dismiss that as saying, well, that wasn't really a very good study. It had very small samples of siblings. There are other problems with sibling controls and blah, blah, blah. And it basically blows away that study and comes back to the point that there is a relationship and they think it's a causal one. Well, you really can't do that. So the best study to do hasn't been done yet, and that is actually measuring the mother's ADHD and controlling for that. But full sibling comparisons are one means of trying to get some control over that. And when a year ago such a study was done, it reported no relationship and went on to conclude that there were within family confounding factors, i.e. genetics, that explain the relationship. So when you hear about this particular finding in the news media in your country, keep in mind that the studies that they're reporting on aren't controlling for the most important confounding variable, family genetics. Okay, well, that's Russ Barkley back again. I'll talk to you from time to time if I see something in the news I think is worth commenting about. Uh, but otherwise, I won't be posting quite as many videos to the channel as I had been doing previously. And I really appreciate your patience with that so I can get on with enjoying some of my retirement years. But it's great to talk to you all. And here in the U.S., it's a holiday weekend. So happy Labor Day, everybody. Hope you're out enjoying the fine weather that we're having here on the East Coast, at least in the U.S. And get out there and have those final cookouts of the summer before the school year and the work year really get underway. So thanks for joining me for this video. Deeply appreciate it, everybody. And as always, live well, be well, take care, and bye for now.